Hey everyone, it's Kaz with Yikes Reviews. Uh, you know when you look at a new show, what's the first thing that sticks out to you? Like you've never read the book, someone told you to go check out this new show, it's really good. You, you begin to watch the show, what's the first thing that pops out to you? It's the opening, right? That's the first thing that grabs your attention. It might be the title, it might be the title, but for the most part, it's the opening, right? It's probably the music. It's probably the way the music jives with the images, um, the tone, it's setting could be eerie, could be upbeat, whatever. The opening is the first way to sell you in on the franchise. It might be even to tell you little tidbits of like what's actually going on within that show. You know, you might get crumbs on the ending of that show within the opening. You know, these are my favorite opening credits in shows now. You might not see ones from your favorite. That's okay. That's okay. Leave a comment. We'll talk about it. Maybe I'll talk about it in a future video. But for right now, I'm going to mention mine. So this, is, this is my channel. Okay. Um, so the first one I'm going to show is Hannibal. Now, Hannibal is and was a divisive series when it came out. It was canceled on NBC and then moved over to another network. Um, and then the, some people can just discuss and decide whether the last season was the best season. I don't think so, but I'm not going to start that flame war now. Um, but it, it is one of my favorite shows, Matt Milkison. He, like I say with everybody, he, he acted his ass off. Um, I think he did a slightly better job than Anthony Hopkins, but I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put the two together. I think Andy Hopkins did a, a version of the older Hannibal and Matt Milkison did a better version of the younger Hannibal. We're not going to talk about Hannibal Rising, but anyway, we're going to talk about uh, the opening credits for Hannibal. So I'll show it right now. Um, as you can see, red. It's going to be a theme. <laughs> okay. Red, red. Okay. Um, you see, like, you don't know if it's blood. You know that Hannibal likes a bottle of Chianti. Um, so that imagery is evoking in you. The music, very e e uh, evil, um, very ominous in tone. Um, it's not upbeat. It's definitely not upbeat, but the faces that come out of view from that wine being poured on them, um, it's highlighting that has something to do with like culinary. You get all these like images in your head of like what this show could be. And it's a little mixture of everything. It's a little mixture of, you know, uh, Iron Chef. It's a little mixture of, you know, macabre horror, um, you know, a la True Detective. Um, it's a, it's a really great, um, look at what you're about to see so yeah and i love the music so um there it is um the next one we're going to talk about is mad men now again people may decide whether the last season was good it's going to be a trend here <laughs> that a lot of these series that i picked a lot of them had weak final seasons but your miles may vary you may have liked it but what i like most about mad men is um it evokes that imagery of being in the 60s um of being, you know, you know, wearing a suit, you know, going to the airport and, you know, I've, I've never, I'm not old enough to know what it's like to be in the sixties, but it evokes that imagery, that feeling. Um, um, everyone seemed classy. Um, this is not talking about like all the social issues that the show discusses. Um, it's not talk about, you know, Don's alcoholism and the way he is narcissistic and the way he treats his wife and his kids and everyone around him. He puts them into a box um i'm not gonna get into it but just from the imagery that you see from Mad Men, um the opening uh the music uh nice piano a man you know falling through falling down it could be metaphoric it could be literal you don't know but you need folks that imagery of like okay i want to know more like what is this about and you don't see you just see an outline of the individual you know I don't know if some of you guys remember, you know, how Apple did had a whole ad campaign. Where they were promoting um, the iTunes um, device and um, they had people like dancing in the background and the outline outline of a black, a black outline. Um, it was very popular. Um, and I think Mad Men is definitely borrowing that. Um, but yeah, I, I love the look of it. I love the feel of it. Um, I love the cut out of the images of magazines and stuff like that. Um, it's just very paced well. It's very to the point. All right. 
Uh, moving on, another AMC classic, um, Hulk Catch Fire. Now, this show took a while for it to catch steam um, when it first came out. A lot of people weren't kind of jiving with it. Um, there are some similarities to Mad Men, um, but I, I don't really see it. I mean, I guess because it's a period piece, maybe you kind of like equate the two, but um, I, I, I don't feel it. But it's basically about um, in the age of when, you know, the World Wide Web is just beginning to bloom. We have two engineers. One's a prodigy coming out of straight out of school. One's uh, I would classify him as sort of like approaching burnout status. Um, he's he's very brilliant, but he just hasn't had his shot in life. Uh, and he's needs the help of the prodigy to kind of help boost him to get to where he needs to go. And then you have like this marketing kind of genius a la Steve Jobs in the mix, um, played by Lee Pace. And Lee Pace does a, an excellent job in that show. Um, so is Carrie Bishop. Um, that's the that's the other guy's wife. Um, but yeah, it, it's a fantastic show. Um, I love the 80s vibe to it. Um, as you see right here in the opening, which I'm about to play, has a nice like synth feel to it. Um, you know, first there was darkness, and then, you know, out of the bloom, a little spark of light, you know, a, lot, a little spark of imagination, a little spark of ingenuity kind of trailblazes across that darkness. And you're seeing like it smash open, you know, different uh, circuitry and 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 and, stuff and whatnot. And it's coming to a point. It's coming to the connection to where it's going. And you can kind of dissect that however you want to. But I love how it's very quick, very upbeat in tempo. Um, it's I would I guess it is sort of ominous. There, I don't feel I feel I don't feel like it's upbeat, but it's definitely not like. I don't know how to classify it. It's definitely like, like not Ted Lasso <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. It's definitely not like that type of like bucolic type of feel to it. it, it there, there are some undercurrents within the imagery. It's very dark. It has red, of course, and, and, and black, but um, it's giving you some idea of what it is about um, without giving you nothing at all. And that's what I like. I, I like kind of guessing what, what it's about. So yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite ones. Um, next. Netflix Netflix is probably best Marvel show. It kind of jump started this whole discussion on a more mature adaptation of Marvel heroes, Marvel superheroes, and that is uh, Netflix's Daredevil. Um, when I first saw this show, um, I I was hooked, like pretty much like everybody else. Um, the fighting. I don't know if you guys seen the raid, but the 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 iconic fight scene in raid in that in that hallway. They do it. Um, you know, uh, Charlie Cox. He's I mean he's really great in his role. Um, and he's given a lot of physicality. He's given a lot of emotion. You know, playing a blind superhero or a sight impaired. I'm sorry, sight impaired uh, hero. But man, just like showing like the scene here where you're looking against a lot of red. <laughs> um. And and you're seeing like how either it, it's blood, it could be paint, but I'm I'm just gonna jump out on a, a, a limb here and say that it's blood. You know, blood of the city, blood of the people who built the city. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's showing you how things were created by people sacrificing their lives. You know, for this thing, and and basically Daredevil, he has endured. A lot of hardship but he's not going to take it he's one that yes i was shaped by this city i was shaped by hell's kitchen but i'm not going to let it destroy me you know i'm going to let it define me and and i'm going to push forward and i'm going to be a symbol um and daredevil represents you know a lot of those heroes are on the on the boots on the ground heroes there's a lot of those heroes that you know you may not see them with the avengers um you may not see them with the x-men even though they've kind of done you know crossovers but they mainly are focused on the neighborhood um and, and and stopping that so yeah i love this this uh opening credit scene the music the, the the tempo of how the music builds and builds and builds towards the end and you see daredevil like turn around um in the shot and daredevil right under it is is nice so yeah that's that one um now uh we're gonna jump back into hbo for a minute um a lot of you're gonna be mad um about this pick I I don't like how the series ended. It ended terribly. It left a bad taste in my mouth for how I view um D and D. 
and um, the creators, the showrunners of um, Game of Thrones. And I, I just have to say um, what they did in the first four to five seasons was was next level. They set the tone and stage of how adaptations should be made for TV, um, from the costumes to the locales to how the characters were portrayed on screen. Now, there are things that re they were removed or neglected from the book. I understand that. Um, and I understand that as the seasons went on, it got really, really horrible. But just to get back on why I love this opening scene, like I, at, you have to imagine yourself as I've never read the book. I've never read the book. I don't know what Game of Thrones is. So I need someone to show me what this series is about. And from the look of how the opening scene starts off where, you know, you're in this huge sun diorama and you're, you know, flying over the lands of Westeros and, you know, things are popping up. Um, empires are built, empires are destroyed. You know, you're seeing only glimpses of what the story is about, even if you haven't read about it. You don't know the names of these places, but you have a feel that, you know, things are things are not as they seem as they seem to be and i think the first couple of seasons of game of thrones definitely were a ray of sunshine in terms of like peak television you know we we, we always had breaking bad uh we have like the sopranos um dexter to some degree but yeah game of thrones it, it was it was in a in a league of its own but i, I love that opening scene um and i love that roman roman duati's composing um He's one. He's also another top tier composer. So yeah. Um, now we're gonna kind of jump into like animation, and um, back into the '90s, right? So as a kid growing up, there were a couple of shows that were must sees for me that I had to get home to see. Um, back in the early '90s, um, X Men is one of them. X Men '92 is definitely one of those series where I had a soft spot for X Men. I was never into Avengers. I was never into Iron Man. They were B, C level heroes compared to like X Men. And the stories, the amount of stories in X Men, the amount of ways they tell how these characters develop, how these characters fall, um, how new universes are made, you know, it, it, it's, it was all there. It's still all there. And I wish. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing Deadpool and Wolverine, um, but I'm hoping someone, I don't know if it's Kevin Feige or whoever, because um, I don't know if Kevin Feige is going to stay uh, at Disney. I hope, I mean, I hope so, but I can understand if he wanted to leave. It seems like how things are being discussed, you know, he has no say in any of it. it some things, same things seem like they're just being restructured. And I, I, I know what that mean, word means, restructured. Um, people have to go. Um, so it seems like I just don't really have any faith in the current iteration of Disney and how they can treat the X-Men franchise. And I hope that Deadpool and Wolverine give a glimpse of that possibility from the, from the trailer. It looks to be that way. Um, and the way Bob Bi Iger is talking about it, that it's going to be, it's definitely going to be the best Marvel film they've, they've made and Deadpool's Marvel Jesus or whatever. Um, which is hilarious, but yeah, I, I hope they can go beyond that um, and make X-Men into a top tier level franchise the way Avengers was made, okay? But yeah, as you can see from just this opening sequence, like the music, the guitar, um, the Sakuga, you know, the way, you know, you know, all the characters are being highlighted and shown with their names and them displaying their powers. Like you have to get all this information to a kid in a matter of less than like a couple minutes, like like seconds, it has to pop, 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 you know? Um, and I think the creators of X-Men have nailed it. And this opening has definitely been an iconic brand for how animation should be done. Um, there are some dips in animation in the show, but this opening sequence is, is damn near top tier. So, yeah. Um, next, we get into, uh, jump back into Disney. Um, there was a little show that came on, um, during the weekdays called Gargoyles. Um, I was a huge fan of Gargoyles. Um, it told a story of these creatures who served man. And then one day man decided to, you know, wipe them all out. And then in between all of that, there's 
betrayal from their own kind. There's magic and sorcery and and political intrigue and you know there's you know POC characters in that you have never seen. I mean, Elisa Maza, she looks just like Princess Jasmine, but you know, she she's not, you know, and 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 it's voiced by Keith David, like Keith David did uh, Goliath, and I have to say this like he's one of the best like voice actors in the business. Like I I love Peter Cullen. Um, Peter Cullen is, is, will, will always be legendary, but Keith David has done so much from, you know, horror to sci-fi to, he worked on Rick and Morty. He's worked, he's been, uh, Professor Tenma and the, the, the Pluto, um, Netflix series. He's just, he's been in even video games and like, um, in um, and like Saints Row, he was the, he, he was, he was in Saints Row as well. So like, there's like so many things that he's done and I've always loved his career. I've always loved hearing his voice and watching him on screen. And in this cartoon, in this show, he knocks it out of the park as Goliath, you know, um, just from his voice and his timbre. And as you can see from like the images, um, it, it was something that you've never seen before. And I know there's people in the industry that wish to take a crack at either doing a live action, uh, gargoyles or, you know, animation. Again, just like how I feel about Marvel, I'm not very confident right now in that that property will be taken care of the way it should be but i i am more than likely and happy to be wrong if if jordan peele or if you know you know the guys that did um everything everywhere all at once the the, the daniels if they want to take a crack at it i love it like anybody uh, it, i i will love it but i i'm just not really confident in the current iteration of disney right now so yeah gargoyles it's a classic you ask anybody um it's one of those best shows um a lot of people of color um, definitely identify with that show um, just for the themes and the way it discusses um, its story elements and stuff like that. And, you know, you just get certain vibes from that show and they appeal to, I guess, from my point of view, I've noticed with a lot of people that love that show, it appeals to them um, a lot. So, yeah, that's that's Gargoyles. Um, and then last but not least, um, I had to do it. I had to do it. Like, I don't know if you guys can see my wall. Um, Dragon Ball. <laughs> Dragon Ball, right? Hey, Dragon Ball, right? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a big Dragon Ball fan. Um, I love it. I love Toriyama um, and what he's done and what he's given to the world and rest his soul. Um, he, he changed a lot of lives. He changed a lot of careers. He, he changed a lot of hearts and minds. We have pe members of a uh, state, you know, you know, giving eulogies to that man. Like that's how influential and global he was. And um he never gave up. He always pushed beyond his limits. Um and I I admire him from that. He's he was definitely someone I, I set myself to my I never knew him personally. Um but you can tell from the works that he made, um he poured a lot of his heart and soul and a lot of his being into these characters you know dr slump and, and 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 dragon ball and dragon quest and you know um this new new property sandland i think this game's coming out you know this year or this month or uh, next month but like he was still working and um the reason why i'm showing this opening there's a lot of op dragon ball z openings like it came out right in the in the late 80s early 90s um so a lot of people like um from mexico brazil to like Japan and America, we all had different versions of how we were going to localize Dragon Ball. And, you know, growing up and, you know, going to high school, coming out of middle school, I remember, you know, running home, watching Toonami. Um, God, when Cardinal was, was, was great. Um, uh, and, and waiting to see the next episode of Dragon Ball. And the one thing that caught my eye and my ear um, was the opening. I'm talking about the Rock the Dragon opening so as you can see like i'm just gonna play a little bit of the music uh, i probably want, might not play the music i don't know but like if you remember that opening you can look at this opening it's just pure energy pure energy chaotic funny like goku he's a grown-ass man and he's acting like a kid you know and um there's i believe there's a saying i'm probably butchering it in the uh hla opening song is like you know having an empty head means you can have you can hold a lot of dreams within so 
you know, being, I wouldn't say stupid, but being ignorant to life allows you to kind of break free and explore creativity and I guess absorb and open up more to the world or whatever. I, I could be butchering it, but like, I, I like that sentiment, you know, I like, I like that idea and Goku's one of my favorite characters. He's, he's a horrible father. He's a horrible father, <laughs> but um, he's a great character. He's someone who never gives up. He always wants to push his limits. He always wants to protect his friends. It's very, it's simple, but it's very difficult to replicate. And everyone over the world over, like I, I have a Dragon Ball shirt and everywhere I go, you know, people that know, call it out. I like your shirt. I like, you know, it's the original orange shirt with the, uh, the King Kai emblem on the back. Um, yeah, I, I love, I love Dragon Ball. and. I'm, I'm going to miss Toriyama. I know his works live on and I hope his family is, is okay. Um, and they're hanging strong. And, um, it's one of the reasons why I love Dragon Ball was because of Toriyama and what he did. So yeah. Um, yeah. So those are my, uh, takes on the things I like. Yes. There were some honorable mentions. Uh, I missed to put in, I forgot to put in Westworld. Westworld is definitely a, a banger of an opening. True Detective. Forgot to put that one in there. It's definitely a banger opening, but I'm going to save them for part two. You know, if, if, if you guys like this one, I can do a part two, part three. If you guys have suggestions, I can put, could include them in there, make a poll, whatever, to include them in there. I'm just just not getting the bearings of things, but these are mine. These are mine. So um, if you if you like what I had to say, feel free to like, share, subscribe. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, we can have a dialogue if you want to. Um, I'm trying to respond. Oh, yeah, I want to slow down and say I want to thank all of you um, so much for the last video I did. I'm going to put it here or here. Um, my, my crow, my thoughts video, that thing take, is, is, is taken off. It took off. It blew up, and um, it did more. I had more views, more engagement um, than any of and all of my shows combined. Um, I mean, of videos, and I really, really, really thank you guys for that. Um, it's spurring me on to do better content, better quality content. And I, I advise you, if you guys see something where I'm, I'm just slacking, hey, man, let me know. And I'll, I will take it under advisement and, and, and get on it. But you guys, I really needed this win. And um, I really thank you guys for supporting me. And, um, yeah, I'm not, not going to get too long-winded in it, but just, just thank you so much, okay? So, yeah, um, that's all I got. Um, remember, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later, all right? Cabs out.